<laughs> These alimony payments are hanging me from my feet, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Boys here. I'm your host, Ethan, the Dead Man. With me, James, the Spooky Miller. That pause James, is spooky. James, he's on push to talk Miller because that's why I hesitated <laughs> I, for a second. <laughs> no, I was waiting for you, my friend. <laughs> oh yeah. To be fair, Jamie must be very used to you and me stepping over whenever he's trying to start a sentence, right? That's true. Yeah. In the in the lore boys traffic laws, you two always have the right of way. <laughs> yes, <Exactly. laughs> yeah. Jamie, that's just because you're did. a motorboat, dude. I'm a beautiful yeah. schooner. You're a motorboat. Peter's like a rinky dink rowboat. You know, it's totally <laughs> illegal to uh, interrupt Jamie on a red light. But uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Peter Bo Don Bones Donahue, whatever my Halloween. Bo Donahue, because he's Bone, very pretty. It's, I know it's aw in French though. Yeah. Uh, that's handsome in French. Beauchamp. But. Uh, welcome to the internet's number one fake history podcast, where we take some of your favorite fictional worlds and dive into the nitty gritty details you may have missed. If, uh, anyone wants to suggest an episode, I'm going to say this at the top, head to loreboys.com slash about and click the link to discord or write us an email at contact at loreboys.com. We love to hear from you guys. Uh, and we look forward to it. This one was a recommendation for someone or from someone, I guess also for someone for that person for which it was from. But I do not remember who that was. Somebody uh, multiple times has requested we cover Lovecraft and some of the horribly spooky things written therein. Uh, Tyler Hughes was uh, the guy who did it. I just, I'm on the page and I Googled it. There we so go. There it. we go. What there a man. There you go. What, JB, pull up the clip, would you? Uh, yeah, on, on the way. <laughs> oh, shit. Speaking of, uh, speaking of Jamie pulling up clips, uh, Joe Rogan Jamie has COVID. Yeah. He got it at a, at a bar in Texas. Which sounds like it sounds like they just give away COVID at a bar in Texas. Honestly, who the who the hell is Joe Rogan, Jamie? D- the, that's where <laughs> the expression comes from. It's his producer. God, yeah. I, God damn it! I've been saying this thing, thinking it was an original Peter O'Donohue thing to say. Make me oh, look like an asshole on the podcast. <laughs> it's like yeah. one of the most famous fucking other than like joe rogan versus ro jogan where you just have him like having idiotic conversations with himself in different shirts that, so jamie yeah. pull up the clip is just like a thing he says when he's yeah. stoned he's just like yo fucking carl sagan you ever see a gorilla and then it's just like jamie pull up yeah. the clip and then they'll and watch it- like a 40 second clip of a gorilla <laughs> and then jamie's just like really good at googling things and also remembering past episodes like jamie what's that guy who talked about uh how wind works and, he, and then he'll google it and then tell <laughs> yeah. you right away yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah okay well uh, for everyone listening for the first time i swear to god we talk we're gonna talk about lovecraft at one point but i really want to dive in deep here i've never seen <laughs> an episode of joe rogan podcast i've only no? seen like you say uh clips where he's arguing with himself uh yeah Clips that are cut up with a lot of Alex Jones, uh, and and a lot oh, of yes. uh, a lot of auto tune Joe Rogan. But that's the only. I still the only don't know how the wind works. Don't don't sweat it, dude. It's there's like uh, molecules. Uh, you know the sun uh, pushes air and uh, moves it around your face. Is this the sun blowing air at us? Solar winds, huh? Oh, uh, true. There's a term we've all heard before. So. <laughs> <laughs> I saw tre- I saw Treasure Planet. Uh, that's in there. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, like the Gith Yankee or the Gith Zarai who uh, sail the astral sea, which we'll uh, get into. Uh, n- not today because that's a D and D thing. That's not a Lovecraft thing. I can't tell. I can't tell. <laughs> that sound like there was apostrophes and no vowels. So that's good. <laughs> I think there are apostrophes in Gith Yankee and Gith Zarai, but I'm not positive about that fact. So don't quote me on it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so note to self, don't ever say, uh, Jamie, pull up the clip again, because it's not funny and unoriginal. Uh, here uh, I am stealing uh, Joe mind. Rogan's best bit on the show, uh, <laughs> for which I apologize. Yeah, we shouldn't be punching down like that either, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, we yeah. really throw him a bone every time we quote him at his Googling producer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as I said, today we're going to be taking a dive into the literary and dipping our spooky toe bones into the H.P. Lovecraft mythos. Uh, we're going to talk a lot of world building since Lovecraft's characters tend to be a, a little stilted, uh, a little, I mean, some of them are okay. Some of them are less than okay. I read a couple stories, uh, in, in, I, I, I'd read in the, uh, at the Mountains of Madness, uh, before and ah. in pre- 
preparation for this, I read uh, Color Out of Time and uh, Call of Cthulhu. Um, cool. They're 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 good. There's there's certain aspects about Lovecraft's writing which I do like, and there's certain aspects about Lovecraft's writing which I don't like. But before we start, before we get into that, um, it's important for me to stress that Lovecraft himself was a greater monster than anything he may have written about. He was a classist, racist, xenophobic garbage person. His legacy is completely and utterly stained by the shit stain of a person he was. Uh, he was a white supremacist. His affinity for writing fictional monsters is often attributed to his demonizing of non-Anglo-Saxon people. Uh, we podcast boys are completely at odds with almost everything this man believed in because he was objectively wrong about oh so many things. That said, uh, some of the writing is pretty cool. Uh, and we know people have requested it. Uh, a lot of people have kind of collectively agreed to enjoy his art without um, admiring the artist. Uh, so that's He's pretty much like the epitome of death of the author. Yeah. Uh, also, who the fuck gets money? Is, is Lovecraft just public domain? So, yeah, you could pretty much anybody can write a, a Lovecraft story because he he never claimed the copyright when he was written, and this is something that we'll kind of get into in a bit. But there's a ton of authors who write Lovecraft horror in Lovecraft uh, Lovecraft settings, and you can write a story about Cthulhu and get it published because in the time that he was alive. He had a lot of correspondence uh, that he would write letters to and write these stories to them. And they would write these stories back and he never copyright claimed them. So then he kind of lost the copyright because other people wrote these stories and published these stories. Well, I mean, uh, to, to his to his credit, I guess, to credit the monster, um, he, he like didn't seem to care about the copyright. You know, he just cared about the fiction itself and he was yeah. doing OK, making a living as a, as a writer as it is. So he, he didn't seem to care. Uh, that said... If anybody disagrees with anything I just said about him, please do not write us uh, about your personal opinions on Lovecraft's politics. I, it's not a discussion I have anywhere near the energy to engage in, and I will just completely oh. mute you and ignore you. Um, not even jokingly, not even anything. Just don't don't write me about Lovecraft's personal thing unless you're just going to write me and be like, Haha, yeah, that guy was a shit stain. Then I'll, then I'll, be, uh -huh. I'll give you a, a react emote at best. Did he uh, fucking... I, may, I, may, I might just be like imagining this. Did he like marry his cousin or something like that? Uh, maybe you're thinking of Darwin. I don't know. I think a lot of people married. Their <laughs> I mean, they did. Uh, Dar Darwin was exceptional because he wrote about how uh, it was so necessary to have diversity in your genetic pool, and he married his cousin. Uh, and honestly, one of the inspirations for it was like, hey, uh, so many of my thirteen children have like these weird genetic defects, and that that kind of inspired some of his writing about uh, genetics. Uh, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> Call of Cthulhu is a game, and then the one I was trying to remember what was in my Steam library is Cthulhu Saves the World, where it's like yeah. a Dragon Quest 8-bit type thing where you play as Cthulhu and just like walk around and get in uh, turn-based combat, which was really fun. There are at least two Call of Cthulhu games, because I played Dark Corners of the Earth eons ago in like 2006 or something. It's also a tabletop RPG, and I don't know which came first. Um, and it's one of his stories, correct? The yeah. Call of Cthulhu is, yeah. That's one of the ones yeah. that I read. Uh, Call of cool. Cthulhu, Color Out of Time, and At the Mountains of Madness. Um, a lot of his writing is kind of funny because so much of of Eldritch Horror, I guess for, for people who don't know what he wrote about, he wrote about these monsters from, from outer space and these gr great old gods, as he called them, uh, and how just like horribly incomprehensible they were because they were like extra dimensional beings, uh, which might sound cliche, but he, he defined it basically. So, uh, you know, not, not cliche in that regard. Um, so, so much of his writing is like, and he saw a statue that was so horrible. He went mad, you know? So it's like, it leaves a lot uh, to the reader to imagine what it looks like. Yeah. Um, some of his uh, monsters have more description than others. Uh, some of them are more fleshed out than others. Some of them are completely created by other authors. So, yeah. go ahead. This is the, the episode that if you would have heard what I said next, you would have laughed so hard. <laughs> yeah exactly but then Ethan and, Ethan and Peter just cut him off so we leave it as an exercise for the listener <laughs> <laughs> well we record this podcast with many other podcasters back and forth yeah exactly yeah. Uh, yeah so Lovecraft himself didn't originally think of the idea of his short stories as one continuous uh, universe uh, it was a contemporary and correspondent called August Derleth who invented what the term great fucking name August Derleth uh, yeah. He's the one who invented the term Cthulhu Mythos, and kind of from oh. there, uh, we have these kind of different circles of Lovecraft canon that all overlap and intersect in, in weird ways. So I'll, 
I'll post a handy handy diagram. Actually, I, I meant to pull this up for you guys, but I didn't. Um, I just want to comment on the name August Duralith again, because he sounds like a man who would show up in like an old timey automobile and like <laughs> buy a child from a <laughs> From like a poor family to raise as an heir. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's that you have there? Is that a boot black? I'll take him. I will. <laughs> I have well, I forty shillings. Carmen San Diego. I don't know why I think Carmen San Diego when I hear that, but it's just like such a, a long name, you know. Where in the world is August Duralith? Was I think the uh, was the the original name, but it was too hard to print. Okay. Uh, he was lured down a well by an unknowable creature. Ooh, oh, yeah. unknowable. That's scary. <laughs> unknowable. Uh, so I've seen The Color Out of Space, which is a Nicolas Cage movie on Netflix right now. Also a story. I don't know yeah. if... It, uh, so The Color Out of Space was a Lovecraft uh, story. There's yeah. another one, which now I'm blanking on, with something else out of space, uh, which is not a, one of his stories, I believe. But um, okay. Anyway, so there's a handy diagram that I'll post on the on the page for this episode uh loreboys.com that kind of just shows you so imagine like a venn diagram with like 15 circles and all like overlapping at different areas some circles are completely within other circles and some of them kind of just intersect and uh and that's kind of like where you get all these different canons uh we're just probably going to be talking about one of them uh mainly just lovecraft's creations uh uh, I'll get into some of the details on on you know or some of the details I I will say and I I may not specify might be created by other authors I I try not to delve too deep into who wrote what because that wasn't interesting for me to research so I figured it wouldn't be interesting for you the listeners to hear about is the Olympic sign like the is that a Venn diagram yes uh yeah yes. <laughs> what, what what kind of, what are they trying to show in that I wonder uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet you uh, I bet you each of the rings in the Olympic logo stands for something. They're they I'm represent sure. the continents. Could be. Wait, whoa. Isn't there seven? Yeah, whoa. There, there's no athletes from Antarctica. So, so the only time only, Oh. How many how many rings are in the because I thought there was only five rings there's in the five. Olympic I think there's logo. five, but it you've got uh I think the Americas are all one thing. There's some of two of the attached continents, I believe, are are the same thing. Because like uh, you, like Europe and Asia might be one ring. Dude, I don't that, think Australia that gets that diagram. Itself. That Venn diagram has not even been accurate since Pangaea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's when they started the Olympics. Yeah. So oh, okay, I, okay. I don't know if I don't know if it's Oceania that's getting shafted or if it's South America that's getting shafted here, but somebody's getting shafted by the Olymp Olympic logo. You know. I would <laughs> assume it's Oceania. That's a newer one because I remember in school that was like Oceania, like where it wasn't always one, but this is one now. Oh, I thought they just called the continent Australia because I remember when they started calling it Oceania around like when we were in grade eight or something. Yeah, uh, and I feel like they was just like, oh, it was Australia, and now they're calling it Australasia or Oceania. But maybe is, not. is I don't Australia know. still a planet, or have they reinstated that? Or is that <laughs> yeah. still <hosting? laughs> you know, uh, in the time it takes Earth to go around the sun once, uh, Australia only moves like one one hundredth of that distance. So. Yeah, it takes Australia two hundred and forty eight years to go around the sun. <laughs> Uh, cool. Um, oh, I, I remember. Probably... I remember the 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 other Lovecraft story, which wasn't about uh, or wasn't written by Lovecraft. It was the Shadow Out of Time. Anyway, ah. so uh, just a quick cursory glance at the timeline of the entire mythos. Uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty wide. It starts in 600 million BC, and and the latest entry is in 18 million years in the future so 18 million 2000 ish okay um so yeah a lot a lot of ground to cover obviously we're not going to get into all of that today uh sit the fuck down audience <laughs> you're gonna be here for a while yeah. uh the, the fun fact for the listeners about those two dates is uh they both come from the same story so 18 uh, 600 million years ago and 18 million years in the future both come from the shadow out of time cool yeah makes sense uh, basically, an alien race arrives on Earth 16 million years ago, and then things happen way in the distant future when a when a man wakes up there. Uh, okay, Jamie and Peter. Uh, yeah. Let's say let's say Peter first, or Jamie first. You guys flip a coin. Uh, what do you two know about H.P. Lovecraft's creations? Uh, they're unknowable. <laughs> they're, like, so we know uh, Cthulhu. There's a lot know, of tentacles. A lot of tentacles. 
We're going to talk about one that has a lot of tentacles. I said yeah, one to you guys earlier today. Do you remember what I said? Uh, nope. I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Come on. Um, I know. know I know one. a lot of them are like a, a lot of the ones I'm more familiar with. Like Shadow over Innsmouth is like sea monsters, but I think that's Dagon, and he turns people into like fish people. I know that some of them can mutate humans. A lot of them are ocean based because he, like, not only did, did he think immigrants were scary, but also the ocean scared the shit out of him. So a <laughs> lot of his monsters are at the bottom of the ocean. Mm -hmm. I know the game Call of Cthulhu, which I never managed to beat because it was too buggy and I couldn't find saves past the point. Um, ends in like a, a temple full of fish people at the bottom of the ocean. So and that's where Cthulhu Cthulhu is like known to be sleeping and dreaming and lives yeah. in uh, an underwater city called R Rile or Rile. And uh, Dagon is like this other sea monster thing, which is apparently in that game. But I remember when I played it, it was so bugged. He never appeared on screen. So I had to <laughs> download somebody's save from past that point. Um, yeah. And there's like, I think it, there's like Photogon or something, which is like a big mass of eyes and meat in outer space or whatever. But a lot of them are like twisted tentacle monsters or straight up sea monsters. And they're all kind of. Yeah. And if you yeah. ever saw their like true form, like your mind couldn't even comprehend it. And yeah. it'd be so horrifying that you'd be driven mad in immediately kind of thing. So it's like, yeah, it's like a, a cube with with five the dimensions or something like that you just don't know how to take it in a, t a tesseract if you will um yeah yeah so that, that's a convenient writing tool as well because so many authors write in the lovecraft mythos you could write a lovecraft like a, a story about an eldritch horror cthulhu and describe him however you wanted and just say like oh no you know people weren't comprehending him prop like the same way because it's it, you know it's inferred by the the reader you know uh, okay how, how okay. he looks so um, you just don't get it mom <laughs> Uh, so you guys score zero points for that round. Ooh, we'll try and do better on the next round. You guys got plenty of time to regain ground. Don't worry. The uh, Smith family is in the booth though. So we're going to go to them and find out what they answered. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Lovecraft's writings, they lean heavily on the theme that mankind is irrelevant. Most of these okay. creatures, uh, that he writes about don't care directly about humans. They're just doing their stuff and humans happen to be there kind of thing. Um, they're kind of, it's kind of like this idea that they're, they're such powerful beings that we are as ants to them. So why would they consider us, you know? Right. Okay. You don't think about what ants are doing in your day-to-day -day life, unless like me, you live in your an pants. apartment. Yeah. <laughs> that had an ant infestation and they were just always on your mind. Uh, dude, I haven't had ants in so long. What a blessing. I haven't even had to think about them. Win winter's coming, my friend. They, they come uh, out in the winter. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, gotta start preparing. What a good cold. Uh, okay. So enough talk about ants, Jamie. Keep them in your pants, please. Uh, so, uh, Lovecraft references beings called Great Old Ones and beings he calls the Outer Gods. Uh, there's some similarities between them. The scope of them varies differently. Uh, the Great Old Ones are a group of unique, malignant beings of great power. They reside in various locations on Earth and once presided over the planets as gods and rulers. Cthulhu is considered a Great Old One. Um, we are to Cthulhu as ants. Uh, the outer gods are cosmically significant entities that are located beyond the confines of Earth and the solar system, exerting their influence from deep space. The, the gap between humans and great old ones is, is ant to human. And the uh, gap between great old ones and outer gods is, is described as greater than that gap. Like okay. the outer gods are so much more like powerful and significant than the great old ones. They barely, they don't, they recognize less basically. Than uh, okay. The okay. great old ones would recognize us. So, so, so Cthulhu can lift eight times less than his body weight than I can. It, no, Cthulhu can lift eight times more, but a great old one could lift 16 times more than Cthulhu, no. even. Where are the ants, dude? You got it all backwards. What, the ants oh. can lift eight times their body weight. We can't. Oh, so where are Cthulhu? the ants? He can oh, lift eight I see, times I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Uh, then, yeah. Cthulhu. Yeah. Cthulhu and David Attenborough just sitting in the jungle watching tiny people chew through leaves, talking about how... <laughs> 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 and now we go to the uh the goatwood 
Um, <laughs> we go to a rainforest where we find these tiny humans uh, off, off on their coast. devious plans. Oh, look at this one. He just got fired from his job and he thinks his life is over. Little does he know, it must go on. Yeah. <laughs> David Attenborough always starts with just like a one word title of whatever you're looking at. It would just like for Cthulhu, it would just be like Boston. Or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it zooms yeah. in over where it is. <laughs> Uh, so now for most of these all-powerful deities with a few exceptions uh they exist outside of normal space time uh we're talking about the uh the outer gods here we're right. not to, we're, we're not going to talk about great old ones pretty much at all this episode until we get to the end they're uh, kind of like dark energy itself they're just like this immaterial kind of scientific concept but as if it were a god right like you can't you could you can't understand gravity it just exists yeah sort of yeah, thing right pretty much okay. we'll, we'll we'll get into it um I don't so, mean to sound like an idiot there. You can't understand gravity. It just exists. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, dude. Two things unexplained by science. Gravity, outer gods. Uh, yeah, Rojo yeah. can pull up the clip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so some of some of these outer gods in, in the canon are known by humans. Uh, they're, the outer gods themselves are generally imprisoned or restricted from interacting directly with most people. Uh, we'll get into at least one exception until the unfortunate protagonist unknowingly expos exposes themselves to an eldritch horror. You know, you ever just like getting changed with your curtain open uh, and then you like turn towards the window and you see just like an outer god just like in his like the Jehovah's Witness outfit standing on your lawn kind of like peeking <laughs> in the window like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like a Jehovah's outfit, but filled with a thousand screaming beans of light. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's start talking Eldritch Horrors, and why not start at the top? So I have a quote for you guys um, from H.P. Lovecraft in The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. Outside the ordered universe is that amorphous blight of nethermost confusion which blasphemes and bubbles at the center of all infinity. The boundless daemon sultan Azathoth, whose name no lips dare speak aloud and who gnaws hungrily in inconceivable unlighted chambers beyond time and space amidst the muffled maddening beating of vile drums and the thin monotonous whine of accursed flutes. Uh, so the first, the first of the outer gods, uh, great, first of his name, uh, Azathoth. Uh, he was the first one in in the canon, the first created. He's at the top of the family tree, and there is a family tree that that Lovecraft drew, kind of tongue in cheek, but he is he is technically okay. at the top of it. So he comes first. I, I wouldn't have picked a flute for a scary instrument, personally. Uh, not a flute, an accursed flute. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> It's not scary. A little Willy Wonka one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pan flute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Azathoth, sometimes called the nuclear chaos, the Damon Sultan, the deep dark, the cold one, and my personal favorite, the blind idiot god, <laughs> is an outer god, as I'd mentioned. Crack open a cold one with the lore boys and lose yeah. your fucking mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crack, crack open a cold one with the blind idiot gods of podcasting, the lore boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say, what, was the, what was the story that that quote was from? Uh, the Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. Yeah, Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath sounds like a guilty pleasure like hair metal band. <laughs> <laughs> so you would listen to it on Spotify, but they no. have accursed flutes. They're wonderful. It, oh, yeah. In in researching this, there's more than a few metal bands that take their names directly from some of the things, like some of the either epithets or the actual names of these these beings. Oh, my God. Yeah. You can't stop them from doing it. They'll just keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the first recorded mention of Azathoth was in a note Lovecraft wrote to himself in 1919 that read simply Azathoth, all caps, hideous name. And that, that was it. So that was the first, the first recorded mention of the name. So I, I know we said that like we obviously disavow pretty much everything he ever did. I do that shit all the time. I have random fucking creative notes yeah. all over the place. It's yeah. like... <laughs> <laughs> my, my phone's so full of notes that I wrote and then never opened again. <laughs> I was looking through my phone notes and I had one idea that I don't remember writing down at all but an animation of a chess play but there's no pieces and only show the attacking of either sides in red and blue and like uh, like a, a time lapse of just like the attacking pieces I have no idea why that was a good idea or if 
I? You want to make an experimental film about chess? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's, I uh... think I was watching a Bobby Fischer documentary and had a little yeah. bit too much wine or something. <laughs> Let's, uh... Let, we'll create a Patreon reward that just gives you access to our notes uncensored or something. <laughs> I have like actual thousands of pages of doodles that my mom, like my mom still has doodles from when I was in elementary school. And just that carried on. Like I never throw away anything. I have all of the concept art that I've ever done for the lore boys. I have a couple of our first uh, script stuff into my chair over there. I think <laughs> on paper. I used to work on paper. Yeah. Yeah. All, all mine's digital, so I I do still have it as well, just on the Google Drive. Uh, you got to uh, keep it in your chair, dude. Yeah. <laughs> in case the internet goes down. Uh, okay. I'll give you the password to our Google Drive. But what if you have ants in your pants and they and you sit in the chair and they crawl out of your pants and eat the paper? Mm, the paper's not the paper. Paper doesn't weigh more than eight times an ant, so they, maybe they just true. pick it up and carry it away. You know? Oh my God! What if did the ants steal the lore boys? IP limit like what what's going on dude we don't you know what I've never considered ants before <laughs> so I don't know okay speaking of ants uh the outer gods are generally speaking like I'd said located beyond the confines of earth and the solar system though there are some outer gods who have taken up residence on earth uh Azathoth is not one of the ones that lives on earth okay uh, for being as all-encompassing as the blind idiot god, there's not much to go on for a physical description. Uh, every contributor to the mythos envisions him differently, and he is always changing. There is some evidence, though, that he, the physical manifestation of Azathoth in the universe is continuous with a spot in the central region of the gal galaxy, Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So, He must be notorious, though, because his initials for blind idiot god is B.I.G., Oh, <laughs> at least big. The notorious Pretty blind good. idiot god would might be a good name for the episode. <laughs> we already have. I think that's a joke for one of our past episodes. <laughs> it's, it's from Hollow Knight. It's the notorious Bug. Oh, Bug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? Who say who says you can't dust off an old classic? Huh? Yeah, man. Right. right. Uh, I'm gonna rip myself off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've been doing it to Joe Rogan for months now, so why not myself? <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, he lives, uh, you know, SpongeBob, the Elder God, lives in a pineapple under the sea. Azathoth lives in a black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Right. Are you ready, kids? Uh, Azathoth. And then it's just the hissing of wind in response. And he's like, I yeah. can't hear you. Yeah. And, and, and disco <laughs> discordant flutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the it's the you know like the memes where it's like 20th century fox on recorder or whatatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's the sound of Azathoth approaching. Well, yeah. that's uh, when because the the final part of the of the SpongeBob theme, he plays the little flute on his nose, but it's just like the <laughs> screaming horrible <laughs> flutes. Yeah. Uh, so Azathoth in the stories is often referenced inside of another book, the Necronomicon. Uh, so oh, I'm gonna assume you guys have heard. Of the Necronomicon. Peter, actually, Peter, I'll assume Peter's heard of it. I'm not sure Jamie's heard of it. Guys, just so you know, the flutes, like, back, especially in 1919, they'd be using tritones, which is six semitones up, and it's, like, the scariest interval, and that's <laughs> what they all thought back then, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that, do you know about the Necronomicon? <laughs> I know nothing about it, too. I know that it's a spooky ghost book that has all the evil stuffs in it. Pretty much. So, like, like Lovecraft never had a copyright to any of his work, uh, the Napper, he he coined the term Necronomicon. He's he's the guy who invented it, uh, and he invented it, it for his stories. But it's been used, you know, a thousand times since then in a bunch of other stories. The the Evil Dead yeah. uses it. Um, it's kind of used all over the place. League uh, of Legends uses it for a spell power build. I'm pretty sure it's uh, that's the Morella Nomicon, which is a reference to the Necronomicon and Tom Morello, one of the uh, creators of League. Right. Oh, okay. Anyway, that uh, is your random uh, League of Legends fact for the day. There's your animal fact <laughs> for the episode, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Morello is a fucking animal. Uh, I, I take that. I, I know Riot Games is problematic. I know nothing about Tom Morello himself. Uh, yeah, me neither. So the Necronomicon, or Kitab al-Azif, is a book first appearing in Lovecraft's story, The Hound. Uh, its title translates, uh, the Arabic title, Kitab al-Azif, and this is a Google Translate, uh, translates to The Book of the Blind. Uh, from what I've read it may be more poetically translated as Book of the Approacher, which I think is more on brand for uh, Eldritch Horrors kind of interfering with Earth from, like, okay. great distances in yeah. space, right? I thought it, like, Book of the Blind did kind of work with Blind Idiot God, so I was like, oh, that's a good job for Google. They translated that decently. 
<clears throat> yeah, so I, I mean, Arabic is um, very much not a Roman or Latin romance language. So yeah. I'm sure most of the translations are, uh, you know, very poetic and, and intended instead of literal. Uh, so in the Necronomicon, Azathoth is referenced a uh, as a significant malign presence. The characters Albert Wilmarth in The Whisper in the Dark, The Whisper in Darkness, and Walter Gilman in The Dreams in the Witch House are both horrified at the mere mention of its name when they read it. Um, so this is kind of that that Lovecraft shtick that I referenced before. Like, I read a name, I'm spooked out because it's actually a presence in the center of the galaxy that can you know influence people's pathos from great distances. Okay. Uh, Gilman wakes from another dream, remembering, uh, quote, the thin, monotonous piping of an unseen flute. So there's your uh, flutes again, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> he decides that he had picked up that last conception from what he had read in the ne Necronomicon about the mindless entity Azathoth, which rules all time and space from a curiously environed black throne at the center of chaos. Dude, World of Warcraft stole Azanoth from that, I'm sure of it. Yeah, for There's sure. like the war glades of Azanoth, and it's like a demon and stuff. But yeah. So I mean, the old gods are all, all homages to uh, Lovecraft's yeah. writing. Like Yog Saron, uh, we'll talk about his counterpart Yog Sothoth, which is an actual yeah. Lovecraft creation. Cthulhu, that's an obvious one. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Cthulhu and Cthulhu. Uh, Gilman later fears finding himself in the spiral black vortices of that ultimate void of chaos, wherein reigns the mindless daemon Sultan Azathoth. Uh, so here's a quote for you guys from uh, The Haunter of the Dark. Ancient legends of ultimate chaos at whose center sprawls the blind idiot god Azathoth, lord of all things, encircled by his flopping horde of mindless and amorphous dancers and lulled by the thin monotonous piping of a demoniac flute held in nameless pause. Um, not pause as in uh, stopping, but pause as in like a dog's pause. Or uh, oh, something aw. else's pause. I don't know. Maybe something less cute than a dog. Bunch of little Labrador puppies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Labrador sure puppies, but they're mindless and amorphous and they're dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> so we, we don't know much about him. We know he's got a, a harem, I guess, of like gray worms just like flopping all about him in the center of the black hole at the center of the galaxy at all times. Yeah. Which sounds kind of cool. Sounds like a, a, sounds... a chill god, you know? He seems like kind of a bastardized virgin, uh, virgin, excuse me. <laughs> I'd love to call virgin. someone that one day. <laughs> you bastardized, bastardized virgin. virgin. <laughs> um, he seems like a bastardized version of something that would have been from like a, like a thousand and one nights or whatever, like an Arabian nights thing. Cause he's referred to as the Sultan as well. And if he's got like music playing, he's got like a throne, some yeah, sort of worms. Yeah. Corrupted so desert King. Yeah. yeah, so I, I never read A Thousand One Nights. I'm not super familiar with it. But um I so I don't know at what point it's like, is it racist what he wrote because he, you know, didn't like Arabic people? Uh so he wrote like all these evil things in their language, because the, the Necronomicon was written by a character he coined uh the Mad Arab. Um which in it I mean in itself isn't racist, but Given the context of who Lovecraft was, it, it most yeah. likely was racist. So I don't know if like calling him the Demon Sultan is kind of connecting his personal politics to the story yet. Um, I, again, I, I didn't go into any of that because I, I didn't want to touch on it too much. Yeah, it's not, we're not doing a biography of Lovecraft, right? We're talking no. about his stuff. Yeah, Exactly. Uh, so among Azathoth's many followers, the worshippers in the town of Goatswood that practice obscene rites that involve, quote, atrocities practiced on still living victims... In Azathoth's conical temples are insects that have fled the destruction of their home planet of Shagai, bringing the temple across the universe with them. Um, so in some of the stories, or at least one of the stories, there's a uh, there's a cult to Azathoth in the town of Goatswood. Like I said, some people do know about these outer gods, and they're typically cultists that are trying to use their power for their own purposes on Earth. Um, he, they, there are also these uh, horrible insect worm excuse me, worm-like things uh, that come from the planet of Shagai that have fled fled across the universe, the destruction of their home planet, and set up shop here on Earth. Okay. Is that They're where the boy. cult worships? So they like they were just like, hey, guys, uh, we're out of space gas. Can we just like park it here in Goatswood, and then you guys can worship us sort of thing? Is that... Yeah, so more or less. So, I, I mean, I, without having read the story myself, uh, I, I kind of picture it you know humans find these horrible insect like creatures and they have a way of communicating 
in some to some extent that there's this being Azathoth that they can summon through various means. Uh, these beings, the insects of Shigai, uh, worship Azathoth. So presumably he's like, yeah, you know, I'll you know I'll make sure your dry cleaning gets done and your your wife suffers for sleeping with your neighbor, but you have to let my insect friends crash at your place for a couple weeks. You know? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Fa- favor for a favor, bro. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I just molt on your couch quickly and then like stay inside <laughs> while my fresh shell hardens? I'm, I can't be exposed to the sun while that's doing that. Like, yeah. yeah, whatever. Can you seal the door? Just like too much air also dries me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. God damn it. The insects of guy put their goddamn shells in the dishwasher again. <laughs> so sick of those guys. They never do their dishes. by hand. Yeah. They use all the spoons, and they just never wash them, dude. And they're, like, so <laughs> crusted by the time they put them in the sink. Uh, that's a shout-out to anybody who's ever had a bad roommate, I suppose. Jamie, shouting you out, buddy. Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't a bad roommate to Ethan. We've never lived together in that context, but I've no. had horrible roommates. Yeah, I said to anyone who yeah. has had a bad roommate. I have not had a roommate for five years because they molted on all my spoons <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't they don't molt on the spoons but they use the spoons to pry off the hardened dead skin right oh. dude yeah. i saw i saw a thing of a lizard getting his like scale thingies removed from his nostril holes after molting or whatever and it looks so satisfying <laughs> I just like, just, it just like came out like perfect hmm. yeah good for him yeah. imagine uh, not being able to breathe and then just getting the scales out your nose like as, as someone with allergies, I can kind of relate. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so from Azathoth uh, comes three other outer gods. Nyarlathep, the one I referenced earlier that you guys forgot about. Uh, yeah. The Nameless Mist and the artist formerly known as Darkness. Um, <laughs> so, so, no, That's not real. No, it's just Darkness, but... Okay, uh, okay. I like so, the idea of the Nameless Mist. It's just like, well, what do you call that one? It's missed. Who yeah. cares? <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's it's got a name. Its name yeah. is just the nameless mist. The nameless mist, but it's like, I don't know, manifest as something cool, idiot. <laughs> um so it does kind of manifest sometimes as as the so the picture that, that was on the, the Lovecraft wiki for it was like like an ant, actually, weirdly enough, but like a 2D rendering of an ant with like I don't know, all these extra appendages. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, definitely definitely a mist. Definitely not mist-shaped some of the times. Okay. okay. I was going to say, it's actual just mist. Knowing how where wind come from would be really important for that thing. Yeah. It's probably the worst <laughs> enemy. Yeah. yeah. It uses solar wind to travel across the, the galaxy. <laughs> so, like I said before, Lovecraft himself designed a family tree for his creations. It's pretty largely considered tongue-in-cheek. Uh, it was in a letter written to a colleague, James F. Morton, and has Azathoth at the top with the three I just mentioned right under him. Uh, later writing by Lynn Carter, also the creators of the Call of Cthulhu RPG, unifies the Nameless Mist and its brother, the Unnamed Dark, into one being. So in the Call of Cthulhu RPG, the Nameless Mist and the Darkness are kind of one entity. Um, okay. In Lovecraft's original drawing, he had them as two points, but kind of like weirdly connected where they're like brother and sister or like brother and brother and they produce offspring in a weird way. Um, it's kind Is of... it just called the Dark Mist now or something like that? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure what it's called in the Call of Cthulhu RPG because okay. that's, that's outside the Lovecraft mythos, so kind of outside okay. the scale of what I was researching specifically. The mistness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we'll start with the uh, oldest brother, I guess. Uh, the Darkness. Oh. No. Uh, the Darkness, uh, also known as Magnum Tenebrosum, which I looked up the Latin. You guys want to take a take a stab at what it means? Uh, biggest something, I don't know. Close. Wait, say it again, Magnum. Magnum Tenebrosum. Uh, it is, I don't know, but it's something really Chad, because Magnum, dude. Uh, so Magnum means big. Uh, yeah, okay, it, big. It, it's literally big dark. Yeah, so oh. We're talking about the big dark here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, quarantine's been going on so long, I'm starting to feel the big dark come on, you know, boys? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, big sad. the darkness, or the unnamed darkness, or the big dark, is another outer god and the progenitor of Shubnigareth. Um, 
who's my I, I thought might have been one of the creatures that you would have recognized. Um, uh, I have heard that before. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, that's it. It was like when I was reading, I was like, oh yeah, that's one that I've I've for sure heard of before. Know nothing about them, but I've heard the name kind of thing. Maybe uh, it's a skeleton lizard. I don't fucking know. The Nameless Mist is also an Outer God, of course. Uh, empowered with omnipresence, reality warping, a causality, which I didn't even look up what that does, but you know, uh, space it time makes things happen. Maybe <laughs> no, a like, causality. Well, it, it, I don't know. Like if you squeeze the toothpaste out the tooth, like the toothpaste tube, you can't put it back in because that's like it. Everything goes in one way. A causality sounds like you could put the toothpaste back in, or it could be outside all along, or it yeah. it, it never had to be in the first place. Or so I was gonna I Google it. Me pull up the clip myself. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Before yeah. before before you do it, because I was I just had it. I had it about to be googled, but I guess you've already looked at it. Uh, so I was gonna say more or less what Jamie said, where like a causality would be the ability to undo something, right? Kind of at will. Yeah. Yeah, the I, I haven't clicked on any of the links here, but the main thing I've got is the a causality in non-local gravity theory. Okay. Okay. That just confused me more. <laughs> having yeah, ha- like... a causality is having no cause, so I guess they could uh, create effect without cause. Okay. But I I think if we're gonna get really into the nitty gritty semantics, they would be the cause at that point. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it's just like like you you could do anything and there's it's basically like writer's ability to just say yeah, yeah he did that and there then he undid it and the time was forward and it was backwards it doesn't matter you know? well anything they could do I could do better uh, <laughs> yep. so a causality space time manipulation immortality and incorporeality which for the nameless myth uh, incorporeality kind of makes sense right okay uh, so it is definitely like a matter manipulating kind of ghost force I guess so it. Seems like, yeah. Makes sense, yeah. Uh, uh, they're not super fleshed out in any of the books because, like I'd said, that's kind of the shtick with a lot of yeah. these short stories is, like, the fact that they're unknown is what's supposed to make them unsettling and horrifying. Uh, so, from these two entities uh, will will come uh, the maybe more familiar names, Shavnagareth, who I mentioned, and Yog sothoth uh, Okay. Who you might also recognize. The comparison to World of Warcraft, Jamie, would be... Yog Saren. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't catch you tossing that to me. Yog Saren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an old god. Exactly. Uh, we'll get to yeah. them eventually. Uh, let's talk about Nyarlathep for now. Uh, known by many, known too many, excuse me, by his epithet, the Crawling Chaos. He's the third of the elder children of Azathoth. He's also known by forty-four other titles. So the guy's Good got God. guys got a lot of nicknames. Okay, uh, the God of a Thousand Forms, the Black Wind, the Crawling Mist, the Dark One, the Father of All Bats, Face Eater. <laughs> Mist- <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys, you guys really laughed at Face Eater right before the one I no, thought you. The Father, no, of, father of All Bats. Of all oh. bats okay, <laughs> yeah, well, you guys, every you, single one. You guys really laughed at at the Father of All Bats two before the one I really thought you guys would laugh at, Mister Tittles. The Howler in the Dark. <laughs> <laughs> the White Man. I mean, very spooky. Uh, yeah. Stalker Among the Stars and a few dozen others. Oh in my a- god, that's so fucking funny. <laughs> they used to call him Dick, which was a nickname for the uh, for Nyarlathep back in the 20s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't really say that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Father of all bats. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know much dumb. about him. All I know is he fucks a lot of female bats, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude's got a pocket full of fruit or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in Edward M. Erdelak's Merkaba Rider series of books, Nyarlathep is revealed to be another incarnation of the Dark Lord Sauron from J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth mythology. Uh, uh, what? In, okay. the works of, in the works of Stephen King, particularly the Dark Tower series, Nyarlathep is one of many identities adopted by the villainous Randall Flagg. The so, Mist is another Stephen King thing, too. He's, he's bored a lot, I feel like. Uh, so I, yeah. I own... Th- there's a... a a modern publication by Arkham House uh, of the Necronomicon, which is just a compilation of his short stories. And uh, it's like a, a beautiful, like faux leather bound book with like this gold filigree. Uh, and the only thing written on the back is a quote from Stephen King. That's basically like, oh, he, you know, he started the the fascination for me and I, I hope he will for so many others kind of thing. Cool. Um, all to say, the so Nyarl- deals with alternate dimensions as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's like, it's basically like eldritch horrors coming out of the mist and killing people, yeah. right? Um, 
so all to say Nyarlathep is kind of one of the uh, more utilized of his creatures because he's one of the most human of his creations. So one of the most relatable and understandable. So he kind of just like fits into a lot of other uh, f- uh, fiction very easily. Okay, um, yeah. When there's... writers need to explain where all these fucking bats came from, they just toss in Nyarlathep <laughs> because he's public domain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Nyarlathep differs from other deities in the mythos in a number of ways. Most of the outer gods are exiled to the stars, like yog sothoth and Azathoth. Most of the great old ones are sleeping and dreaming like Cthulhu. Nyarlathep, on the other hand, is active and frequently walks the earth in the guise of a human being, usually a tall, slim, joyous man though he has thousands of other forms which are pretty traditionally sanity flaying. That's kind of where the all these different nicknames come from is because anybody could be Nyarlathep. Jamie it's could Slender- be Nyarlathep. It's Slenderman. It's the Slender Man. I like the fact that he just shapeshifts into different kind of boring dudes until he gets a new <laughs> nickname and then is tires of it and then changes into something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, stop calling me Mr. Tittles. Come on. <laughs> Come on. His guys, I didn't have sex with that bat. Garden child. Uh, guys, I didn't have sex with all those lady bats, okay? Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> sure, they were cute, but, like, they wouldn't even give me their number. You guys are so mean. Crack a great cold one and then harass him about all yeah. his alimony payments he has to make for bats. <laughs> guys, guys if, you, if you don't stop, I'm totally going to break your psyche and drive you into a full mental breakdown, okay? Come on. <laughs> Salad boy money payments are hanging me from my feet, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you know how much fucking money I gotta pay in cranberries every every month, okay? <laughs> I'm keeping that son of a bitch in Stardew Valley afloat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so while many of the, uh, the other outer gods have cults serving them, Nyarlathep seems to help out with his ability to walk the earth so casually. Uh, he's often at the churches of his siblings and nibblings, serving in their stead. So he doesn't necessarily have cults devoted to him as much as he'll, like, he'll show up at the cult of Azazoth and be like, oh yeah, the bug things, they're from a planet called, uh, Shagai. They want oh, you okay. to worship their god, Azathoth, who lives <laughs> at the center of the, the galaxy. What's a nibbling? Uh, it's a gender neutral niece or nephew. What? Oh. I'm gonna use that from now on. That's way better than <laughs> That's sibling. That's so cute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it does sound like a baby animal. But now, now I'm just thinking of Nyarlathep as just like when he manifests in Vegas. He's like, look at me. It's the real Elvis and whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he, he manifested as Charlie Chaplin and got third place in a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so Nyarlathep can use human languages, something the other outer gods traditionally cannot do. Uh, the other other gods tend to be all powerful, but without any kind of moral, uh, mortal or comprehensible intent. Nyarlathep, on the other hand, seems particularly adept and focused on manipulating humans. So where Cthulhu is like he lays dreaming in Rilla, the city under the sea, and people kind of the cultists worshiping him give him these intentions. He Cthulhu doesn't necessarily have those intentions. You know, <clears throat> they're just dreaming what they're dreaming, and you know, shit happens. Like I said earlier, okay. Nyarlathep seems pretty intent on fucking some people up. He seems to just enjoy okay. it. Okay. Uh, deliberately deceitful, has used used things as mundane as propaganda to achieve his goals. So you know, uh, Nyarlathep enacts the will of the outer gods. Is their messenger, heart and soul. He is quote the. Im- immemorial figure of or of the deputy or messenger of hidden and terrible powers he's also so he can understand both people and the outer gods mm-hmm. so he's like an interpreter basically yeah exactly um okay the third of azathoth's children he uh he, he he gets what dad's you know driving at he, he yeah he knows how to he knows how to work the parents because he's the youngest child so you know he, okay. was, he, he was born like he was like very much a mistake baby let's say so like oh the parents yeah. were already like retired and they like got rid of the stress of work by the time they raised him so he like, kind of has like a good relationship with them okay good <laughs> yeah, yeah. the great accident yeah <laughs> <laughs> one of his many nicknames well, yeah exactly <laughs> a great mistake uh, <laughs> so nyarlathep enacts the will of the outer gods uh he's also the servant of Az- azathoth whose fitful spastic wishes he immediately fulfills or usually immediately so he gets phone calls from dad in the middle of the night. Like, no, 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 you got to understand. You got to tell your human friends to let my bug friends move in with them. Okay, dad, sure, sure. I'll, I'll tell them. No problem. <laughs> yeah. They can't that, really sounds like a sh- that sounds like a shitty job because he can, yeah, like you said, he's an interpreter. So he's just trying to like yeah. balance it back and forth all the time. Yeah. It's, it's not where you The great be. subtitler where he just kind of like <laughs> does that for all the, all the insect people videos. 
<laughs> it does their closed captions for them. Yeah, he's got a great localization job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he works with the government. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. So to Nyarlathep, spreading madness is more important and enjoyable than death and destruction. Uh, a lot of the other gods really love the, we're just going to blow shit up. He's like, no, no, no. I want to fuck them up so bad that they blow themselves up. Uh, you could probably get a lot more enjoyment out of that. That's like an investment cosmic prank to <laughs> yeah, drive people yeah. crazy. Because if you just blow up a city or whatever, then those people are is all dead. And then you're out of play things, right? <laughs> Dude, the supercomputer from last episode figured that out. Like, after a while, like, you destroy enough. You got to keep a few just to mess with them, right? Yarlathep ain't got shit on Am. You're right. Yeah. Um. So I have another quote for you guys. Uh. And it was then that Nyarlathep came out of Egypt. Who he was, none could tell, but he was of the old native blood and looked like a pharaoh. The Philahin knelt when they saw him, yet could not say why. He said he had risen up out of the blackness of 27 centuries, and that he had heard messages from places not on this planet. Into the lands of civilization came Nyarlathep, swarthy, slender, and sinister, always buying strange instruments of glass and metal and combining them into instruments yet stranger. He spoke much of the sciences, of electricity and psychology, and gave exhibitions of power which sent his spectators away speechless, yet which swelled his fame to exceeding magnitude. Men advised one another to see Nyarlathep and shuddered, and where Nyarlathep went, rest vanished, for the small hours were rent with the screams of a nightmare. That's cool. That's, that's from Lovecraft's uh, eponymous uh, poem, Nyarlathep. How far okay. along was psychology back then? Did they know electricity like was happening in the brain back then? That's pretty fucking cool. Because uh, it's talking about psychology and electricity for like mind manipulation or something like that. Yeah, I so I don't know. I don't know if it was just electricity was novel at the time. So like he just spoke of the science of electricity. Right. Uh, like I don't know if it was electricity and psychology together or the sciences electricity and psychology. But I love the right. idea that he did. Um, yeah. I don't know how far psychology was along at the time. You're the psychology major, so why don't you tell me? Dude, I haven't been to school in five years. But I bet <laughs> you, what I did learn is what he was making out of all those plastics and metals was, was bongs. That's what I learned. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> that Nile weed hit different, though, and he's just yeah. like ripping a fat one. <laughs> <laughs> it truly is the bounty of Egypt, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so according to Lovecraft himself, Nyarlathep would go on to impregnate a real Roman noblewoman named Vibernia. Vibernia, okay. again, a real real Roman woman. She's plucked is, from history. She's not made up. She's plucked from history, and here's the how okay. and why. Uh, she's purported to be the actual ancestor of Lovecraft. So Lovecraft traced back his lineage to ancient Rome and oh. found this woman named Vibernia and said Nyarlathep impregnated her then. So in... In Lovecraft's fictional worlds, he's a descendant of the Crawling Chaos. Worth noting, many of Lovecraft's stories are told from the first person. Uh, okay. Every single one I've read is told from the first person. I don't know if he's, he wrote any that aren't first person narrated. Yeah. Um, They're all FPS books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with the family lineage established, let's go down uh, the tree between the spawn of the Nameless Mist and the Darkness. I did, I don't talk about the Nameless Mist and the Darkness so much because there's really not a lot on them. They exist in outer okay. space. They're, they're kind of referenced, but not much is known about them. So we're going to talk about Yogg-Sothoth and we're going to talk about shub uh, Which would you guys like to talk about first? Uh, what about the WoW one? Yogg-Sothoth. The Yogg-Sothoth. Okay. Yeah, uh, my tongue yeah. just fell out of my head. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, These are I, not normal words or names. Uh, yeah. like, I, I, I was writing this script and I was so worried that I was just going to be tripping over yeah. every second word, but I, I'm pretty proud of how I've done so far. So it feels like you're having an allergic reaction when you're trying to pronounce <laughs> yeah. <things. laughs> What's in this? Eldritch horror? I'm allergic to Eldritch horror. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I got another quote for you guys. Yogg-Sothoth knows the gate. Yogg-Sothoth is the gate. Yogg-Sothoth is the key and guardian of the gate. Past, present, future, all are one in Yogg-Sothoth. He knows where the old ones broke through of old and where they shall break through again. He knows where they have trod Earth's fields and where they still tread them, and why no one can behold them as they tread. That is from the Dunwich Horror, or the oh, yes. Dunwich Horror. Uh, I thought it was Dunwich. So it's it's spelled Dunwich. Uh, yeah. Dunwich is a real town in Scotland, pronounced Dunwich. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. But it's set, it's set in a town in New England, 
So it may have been pronounced Dunwich. Lovecraft so himself I... never specified which way it was supposed to be pronounced. Okay, yeah, because the only time I've ever heard it spoken out loud is there is a quest in Fallout 3 in the Dunwich building where you do find an evil book that is turning people into ghouls. So there oh, is just okay. like a there is just a spooky it's it's a hidden quest. There's no like title, mm -hmm. but the it's a hidden quest called the Dunwich Horror. And in the fucking expansion and point lookout, there's like this weird dude who wants you to go get the book there, and that's the only time it's spoken out loud. Oh. So I thought it was like a hard ch instead of the <laughs> Yeah, it'd be like a short form for a smoke meat sandwich too. What? Because <laughs> they're all oh, guess done, which done, done yeah. sandwich. Oh, done. He's talking yeah. very specifically about a Montreal baker or a Montreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought about it before saying it, but I just couldn't stop my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> so Yog Sothoth is a cosmic entity and outer god. Again, we're still in the outer gods here. Born of the nameless mist, he is the progenitor of Cthulhu. Haster the Unspeakable, and the ancestor of the Vurmi. Uh, we won't get really get into any of those. Today, okay. anyway. Like, lo like many Lovecraftian gods, Yogg-Sothoth has many different appearances throughout the various stories of the mythos by various authors. There seems to be a common agreement that Yogg-Sothoth visually manifests as a mass of glowing orbs, with eyes or tendrils in some versions, and in others, simply the orbs. So he's like a, a big... A big pile of eyes, essentially. He's like Hermaeus Mora in Elder Scrolls, who is yeah. the total Cthulhu knockoff. Because in Elder Scrolls, we did an episode about this, but uh, the Ogma Infinium is the Elder Scrolls legally distinct Necronomicon. There you go. Yeah. I, yeah okay. Again, they didn't even need to legally distinguish it, so they could have just said the Necronomicon. They just yeah. That so that is the writers really trying to pull a fast one on you and be like, no, no, we were original and creative when they weren't at all, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, it is heavily implied, if not outright stated, that yogg is an is omniscient, is locked outside the universe. Uh, it means he can know and see all of space-time at once, uh, so there's no secret you can hide from yogg Jamie, that thing you were doing right before the podcast? yogg saw it. What? Uh -oh. When I ate the pickle? You remember the pickles? You remember the pickles, I ate Jamie? The pickle. You told me not to finish the pickle. I finished the pickle. You finished the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> and yogg saw that. Uh, oh, Yogg-Sothoth no. is called upon from time to time to assist mortals in performing occult deeds or rituals. Uh, the most notable instances of these events are recorded in, recorded in the case of Charles Dexter Ward and the Dunwich Horror. One ritual involving Yogg-Sothoth makes use of the, quote, essential salts of a deceased individual to resurrect them from the dead. The incantations involved with this are transcribed. I'm going to uh, send you each uh, uh, a ritual ritual to uh invoke and i, okay. I want you guys right. to, try, to try and read it who wants to go first <laughs> i will i will <laughs> okay so here's yours it's in the okay. discord oh christ <laughs> <laughs> okay so there's just an omega symbol first I, I can't pronounce that i think you already did it's pronounced omega okay so <laughs> omega oh christ I'll, okay so, <laughs> omega yanga yog sothoth ki he e Ulgeb Phi Throw Dog Ua Ua <laughs> Shark Bait Phi Throw Dog <laughs> <laughs> uh, So that, that's to resurrect someone from from the dead. So P Peter, okay. who did you just resurrect from the dead? I didn't have anybody in mind because I didn't know what that incantation was. It would have been Yog Sawa. No, no, no. You, you use Yog Sawa. The guy who's gonna do it to resurrect uh, a deceased yeah. human, okay. presumably. Uh, Plucking a dead person's soul from the past when they were still alive that he can still see, right? I hope I hope whoever it was, Peter, it wasn't a loved one because Jamie's about to put him down. Jamie, here's the incantation. <laughs> here's the incantation to put him back in the dirt, okay? Could you, could you give that one a Og, call? Yeah. Og Thrad Eif Gebli E Yog Sothoth Nagang Ai Zro. Oh, damn. Damn. You did I got better chills. than I did. Yeah, yeah, way better. Okay, so Jamie, you're now on, on the same team as the Smiths, and you guys are winning in points. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Peter, you're all by yourself now, buddy. <laughs> I'll, I'll get on the board eventually. I'll raise the dead. You watch me. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, in one case involving the town of Dunwich, Yog Sothoth is known to have been summoned for the purposes of impregnating a human female who then gave birth to two partially human children. The summoner was the husband father of the Waitley family, who was known to have stood on a hill in a circle of stones with the Necronomicon while shouting the name of Yogg-Sothoth from the summit. 
don't want to poo-poo this guy's parade here, but there are way safer ways to get your lady pregnant. I'm just <laughs> yeah. going to throw this one out there. <laughs> yeah. uh, this guy, not interested. In him. So he, he was a daredevil. He'd done skydiving. He'd done bungee okay. jumping. You know, he'd done yeah. base jumping. And he was like, what's next? I guess getting my wife and pregnant with an elder tour and raising the child as if it were my own. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, I mean, you could just ride her bareback if you guys are into that sort of thing. It's like, nah, man. I, <laughs> no. I'm, not, I'm not an adrenaline junkie anymore. I don't yeah. need to do that. <laughs> I mean, raising an Eldritch Horror would be, a, it would be a spike for adrenaline for sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When they leave the house when they're 18 million years old, it's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that's Yogg Sothoth. Let's talk about uh, Shop Niggurath. Okay. Shop Niggurath. Uh, the black goat of the woods with a thousand young. That's the most common of her epithets. First appeared in Lovecraft's revision story, The Last Test, published in 1928. She is a perverse fertility deity said to appear as an evil cloud-like entity. An enormous mass which extrudes black tentacles, slime-dripping mouths, and short, writhing goat legs. Small creatures are continually spat forth by the monstrosity, which are either consumed into the miasmatic form or escape to some monstrous life elsewhere. Uh. Ew. Uh, cool. Sounds like a mess, dude. You wouldn't want her on your carpet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, re- really, you wouldn't want her, you know, anywhere near the Persian rugs because that's yeah. not going to come out, you know? That miasma <laughs> is just not going to come yeah. out. Those mad Arab rugs or whatever he would call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Billy Miasma here with OxyClean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get El- Eldritch exposure out of your rugs. No problem with OxyClean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Shabdingarath is the wife of the not-to-be-named one and of yogg So... Ooh. Uh, Double, double, double husbands. Uh, Yogg, uh She birthed the twins Nug and Yeb. Uh, we'll get into Nug. Nug, who Nug and Yeb are. Uh, Nug is so cute. It's like Nugget. But what, what's important is that uh, canonically, divorce or polygamy exists in the Lovecraft mythos because, I mean, she's married to two, two elder Taurus, right? Yeah, um, and both of those ideas are absolutely horrifying beyond my <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, polyamory, get that shit away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm scared of losing her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the most extensively worshipped of the Outer Gods. Anyone could summon Shubnigaroth to any woodland at the time of the new moon. Jamie, what's a new moon look like? Uh, it's like a moon, but younger. Okay, yeah, that's pretty. Cl- that's pretty close. Uh, it's still legal. Don't worry, it's millions of years old. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's new. It's not that new. Uh, <laughs> it's when the moon is gone from the sky, correct? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's when yeah. when there's no moon in the sky is, is called a new moon. So it's because the earth is in the way when when the night is darkest. Mm. Uh, the earth is in the way. Is it when the earth? Yeah, when the earth is in the way. It must yeah, be. our shadow. The sun, I don't think, has a shadow. Yeah, it's when the sun it's gets in between us. Uh, when what the I, sun gets in between us and the moon, that's when the new what moon. I, I was thinking something equally stupid, that the moon was on the other side of the earth at the time, and I was like, no, that's just not a moon in the sky, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what we normally call it. Uh, so, so she seems like, a, a, again, like I said, the kind of the, the bastardized Arab king, she seems like a more bastardized kind of like pagan goddess from like ireland yeah. or scotland or something like that some sort of celtic fertility monster that you worship when the moon is gone yeah so i mean essentially she is a fertility monster um yeah the most popular because uh maybe because she's the easiest to get a lay from you know Who knows? i was just I, I just thought something horrible and thankfully my fiance does not uh listen to the show but she's irish and i was just like that's my kind of celtic fertility monster <laughs> in my own head uh yeah, it's like the cookie monster, but they say baby, baby, baby instead of cookie, cookie, cookie. Oh. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Cookies just constantly pouring out of this giant writhing mass of tentacles. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the place from which she comes is unknown, but anybody can summon her. So you just all you need is a wing and a prayer and a, a moonless night, and you're okay. able to summon Shubnigra. Uh Can she so- appear at multiple summoning circles independently, or is she like Santa Claus where she hits everything in order? I, I don't know if it's ever uh, fully explained. I don't know if Santa Claus is ever fully explained to not be hitting places simultaneously. 
you know? He should be arrested either way. I don't you know. <laughs> Yeah, break, it's breaking and entering. I mean, <laughs> guy's a creep. Uh, some do suspect that she comes from the court of Azathoth at the center of the universe. So some people think that yeah. you're summoning her directly from um, Sagittarius A-star. Okay. Shubnigaroth is believed to have done a fair amount of mating and producing a fair amount of progeny. But without the time to go through each of them, I don't see a tremendous value in us diving into the names of them all. Um, so the Thousand Young, which earned a place in her moniker, either come from mating with Hashtur or from pure fission. So she's called the uh, the Black Goat of the Woods with a Thousand Young. Um, the Thousand Young are either from Fuckin, another Elder Tor, Hashtur, okay. or like just from within. Or from pure fission, so just creating them yeah. from within her, like JV says. Yeah. So, uh, if there's only ever a thousand at once and she's constantly spewing them out, do you think like the last one dies every time the first one's born or something? Like, <laughs> yeah, her baby's like shark teeth or something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah they're, she's just shedding them like shark teeth. Well, it, it, uh, it, it did specify that she spits them out constantly and some of them just like fall into her miasma at the bottom and she just consumes them again like immediately so speaking of shark teeth you guys know why your eyelashes never grow too long it's because they fall out out. yeah you've never found an eyelash well i've done that but i was like cleaning my hair the other day and i was like do i have to condition my eyelashes this is the same hair (laughs) on my face that i'm not i'm not doing and apparently websites say yes i should be conditioning my eyelashes that is insane that is insane why would you condition your eyelashes who are you gonna give butterfly kisses to? It's <laughs> yeah. yeah, they'll be too soft and wimpy to even feel them against my face, Jamie. Yeah, yeah imagine they drooped. <laughs> imagine you had to trim your eyelashes, or else they fell down. Like... Yeah, yeah. You're like combing them <laughs> after like, a shower. Yeah. You gotta like pass the comb up through them, like... <laughs> <laughs> gel them up like little spikes with frosted tips, like Nick from the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think frosted eyelashes are a thing, but. I don't think we got to get oh, into man. cosmetics. Yeah. We're not the cosmetic boys. Not yet. Uh, not yet. Mm, no. Crunch, crunch at us, uh, Maybelline. Uh, so <laughs> the dark young or the thousand young themselves are horrifying pitch black monstrosities seemingly made of ropey tentacles. They stand as tall as a tree on a pair of stumpy hoofed legs. A mass of tentacles protrudes from their trunks where a head would normally be and puckering maws dripping with green goo cover their flanks. So that's what she's just like constantly spitting up and and eating. Okay. The monsters kind of roughly resemble. Devils. Sorry, go ahead. Kind of like traditional devils, but they have tentacle heads instead of a goat man head. Exactly, exactly. Okay. okay. So the monsters roughly resemble trees in silhouette. Uh, the trunks being the short legs and the tops of the trees represented by the ropey branching bodies. A congregation of these abominations smells like an open grave. They usually dwell in woodlands wherever Shubnigroth's cult is active. Okay. So if you're walking in the woods and you see a tree with goat legs and tentacles for branches, you might be near a Shubnigarath cult. So maybe go, um, maybe stop in and say hi, you know? You catch it on the wind, you're like, that smells like, anybody else smell that? That smells like an open grave. It's like, man, <laughs> nobody knows what that smells like except you. So. <laughs> uh, I'm a farm boy. You find you find corpses of small animals sometimes. Death has a very Lonely distinct smell. Oil. Death has a very distinct smell. It smells yeah. terrible. Uh. So let's talk about uh, their children, Nug and Yeb. The children of Shubnigarath and Yogg-Sothoth, Nug and Yeb, as Jamie uh, pleasantly put it, Nugget and Yeb, uh, also oh. known as the Twin Blasphemies, would become the first of the Great Old Ones. So okay. we've been talking about outer gods, uh, these beings that exist out in space. These are, are some of the first ones to come and just like chill on Earth that aren't Nyarlothep and just kind of like hang out here and don't really extend an influence out into the universe nearly as much as because even Nyalothep has the capacity to you know speak with Azathoth at the center of the Milky Way and you yeah. know can probably exert an influence across great distances maybe even can create copies of himself on other planets at the same time and have them all kind of running at once um, Nug and Yeb don't have those abilities seemingly I mean, they have a lot of abilities but we're not going to get into them today because we're not going to talk about the great old ones but this is kind of the start of the great old ones Okay. So they spawn their many of their own progeny, uh, brother and sister, brother and brother, sister and sister. I didn't look into it too much, so it's not super clear. I don't think it's super relevant for Elder Tors. I don't they're know why the gender of them. Uh, no, they're siblings. They're Nyarlathep's nibblings. 
Um, oh, right. Yeah. So they would go on to spawn many of their own progeny, such as Sharush Ho, Yogash the Ghoul, Kaba the Serpent, Nush the Eternal, probably the most widely known of the Outer Gods, uh, Cthulhu. Okay. Um, various cosmically significant entities featured in the Cthulhu mythos. So he's like a second generation Earth monster. So his parents were born on Earth. Yeah, and then exactly. Who was born on Earth? Okay. Uh, <laughs> No, I don't. So I don't know if it's specified that Nug and Yeb were born on Earth or if they came to Earth at some point. I, I, I they, they, I, I, I'm inclined to think he's a first. Cthulhu is a first generation. Okay, I, think I, his, I was confused there. Na- the was nameless about, like, the actual rituals. The, yeah, the nameless myth okay. and darkness produced uh, Shubnigaroth and Yogsothoth, right. who are outer gods who exist in outer space. Yogsothoth right. is uh, actually bound outside of the material plane so cannot even enter our our dimension our reality he can only influence things from outside of it um, so they're second generation so they get the culture a little better they have to explain things to their parents yeah, like exactly. why the why the humans go to sleep at night and things yeah. like that yeah, Cthulhu so they, doesn't have an accent but he's bilingual right it's exactly it's yeah. exactly so then okay. yeah. yogsothoth and shubnigaroth produce nug and yeb so presumably not on earth okay because okay. because okay. Shubnigaroth lives at the uh, the court of Azathoth in the center of the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, uh, and okay. Yogsothoth lives outside of our reality, our space time. So okay. wherever they created Nug and Yeb, I don't know. I didn't look into it, but wherever they created Nug and Yeb, the culty yeah. stuff. Like I was like, oh, she's constantly there's fucking tentacled goat men falling out of her body. <laughs> I thought that's like, oh, that's like in the forest somewhere in New yeah. England. Like, so the, in Vermont. Yeah. the tentacled goat goat men was who she produced with Hashtur, who is another Eldritch Abomination who we're not going to okay. go into. Uh, he's he's a great old one who kind of comes from her own lineage. It's weird. Uh, yeah. But then they, pr- Nug- they produce the Thousand Young, or she produces them by fission. Okay. okay. I think Nug was conceived in a McDonald's bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the new moon. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's, that's kind of as far as we went with Lovecraft's writing specifically about the Outer Gods. Um, right. I would obviously love to do another episode. This was a, another for me, very much in my wheelhouse. I love like the literary ones. I love the ones without, you know, spoiling major plot points and things like that. It's just like talking about the 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 aspects of it. So if you liked it, go come join the Discord, loreboys.com slash about. You can find the links there. Um, or send us an email saying you liked it. Or please, 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 please leave us a review on whatever app you're using right now. Hey, using the app, are you mm-hmm. driving? Just like pull up your phone while you're driving and just get to writing a review for us. You know, five stars, baby. Uh, let us know you liked it, uh, and I'll I'll do another one. I can do another one on the great old ones. I could do another one on some of the other circles. Uh, and again, I'll I'll post like I wanted to have it ready to show you uh, you two boys it while we were talking, but I didn't pull it up in time. So uh, okay. I forgot. Do you to just call that. us YouTube boys? No, YouTube you YouTube, oh. YouTube boys. Okay, I was about to make my next episode ten minutes and one second long. Hit <laughs> <laughs> smash that like button hit the notification bell yeah. all that stuff jamie jokes but do smash that like button do hit the notification yeah. bell um on whatever podcast app you're using i've been your host ethan palmer thanks so much for listening um you can reach out to us uh at loreboys on twitter twitch.tv slash loreboys uh we have a ton of stuff uh, best place to find our contact is loreboys.com slash about um, you can find me personally at Ethan the Dead Man. Feel free to uh, throw me a follow, throw me uh, throw me some retweets, throw me some likes. You know, get me that dopamine. Uh, Jamie, <laughs> where can we find you? Loreboys.com slash about hop in that Discord. A uh, lot of good discussion going on today. We're talking about Skyrim, talking about a bunch of other stuff. I haven't completely caught up yet, but if you want to talk to us directly and with other like-minded people who like the show, that's the best place to do it. Mm-hmm. And Peter. Uh, at Loreboys Podcast on Instagram. And then, of course, uh, if you go to loreboys.com slash about and click on the T Public link, you can buy some merch if you're mm-hmm. into it, if you can. Uh, or just go come to the Discord and suggest more merch. Um, a lot of people have been getting stuff shipped to them recently, mostly around the U.S., and keep telling me everything is good quality, which, thank fucking God. So <laughs> at least we've got that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, here is a T-shirt. You wash it once, and it just, like, completely comes unthreaded. <laughs> yeah. But uh, apparently even the stickers are are all good, so positive reviews on that. Yeah. And it's all made to order, so uh, no pressure. That's it, yeah. If you guys if you guys want it, go get it, because it, it costs us nothing. Yep, you know, exactly. we get a, We get a small percentage of what T Public you know, pays and then profits off of somehow. I don't know how business works. 
Uh, yeah. Jane, uh, if anybody wants to get in touch with us via email, you can do it contact at loreboys.com. Jamie, I believe you have a couple of emails to read from our beloved listeners. The Cult yeah, of Lore Boys. I'll pull that up right now. So we've got two. Uh, the first one uh, here is from Isaac. And the caption or the title is, Are Vikings Aliens? Mm. <laughs> and <laughs> Isaac says, Hello, dear boys of lore. As your, as of now, self proclaimed resident Swedish person. So he's trying to take it from uh, who's our other Swedish friend uh, with the with the Dutch uh, something or other. Well, that Dutch was our Peter. That was our oh, Dutch, that was Dutch friend Peter. Peter. <laughs> 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 no, okay, so yeah, he's from. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where can I find him? Our our Dutch friend Swedish Peter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, he can confirm that Swedish babies do, in fact, cry with an accent, and okay, all yeah. Swedish people are aliens. Oh, oh good to know. Good yeah. to know. Uh, while we're on the topic of aliens and Swedes, I'd like to suggest an episode on the plentiful fake history of Viking lore. The Azer, A-E-S-I-R. Uh, he thinks it could be a fun one similar to the Dante stories and previously suggested Greek lore. Kind regards, your very own Swedish alien, or Isaac, whichever you prefer. Well, thank you, our Swedish alien, Isaac. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I would love to do uh, an episode like that. That sounds that sounds That's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Um, pulling up another one. Just going to ignore the one where we have an inheritance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did you guys hear? Somebody died and is leaving us all their money. It's incredible. <laughs> How many people? I don't even realize I had so much family on the Ivory Coast. It's so nice. <laughs> <Yeah. to be laughs> <there. laughs> uh, so this one's from Chris Flaska, and the caption is "Love the show." He says, hello, I only just found the podcast and I love it. Uh, it really makes my work day easier. You guys have great humor and find some interesting lore to both discuss and make fun of. I just started the PT episode and I have to say, I do hope you cover more horror games. I know it might be a bit boring after a while, but horror is my favorite genre of gaming. Uh, I know personally I'd like to cover some SCP stuff with some cool granular uh, horror extra dimensional stories. And I don't know about the other boys, but it's definitely in my plans. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, just, you got to give me, give me something more specific than general horror games and I can look into it for sure. Well, I'm oh, glad you games. asked because he would love to hear about, uh, Alien Isolation, System Shock, Darkwood, just all of Silent Hill. And we do have a Silent Hill <laughs> we episode. We have a Silent Hill yeah. episode. <laughs> we, have, we have a Silent Hill episode and I, we have at least one Alien episode, but I think it's our fifth episode. So you, maybe we, maybe that's one we could revisit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Outlast. Uh, Atomic Heart. Dot. 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 Someday. So I guess that must be a long one. Atomic Heart's not out yet, but that looks really fucking cool, actually. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, condemned. All caps. Uh, Dino Crisis, which sounds. Oh fuck yeah! That sounds <laughs> that <is> horrifying. <laughs> Have you ever played Dino Crisis? No. Beyond I, Good I and Evil and about. Burnout Paradise. But no, I haven't played. Dino Crisis. What is Burnout it? Paradise yeah. is probably the most genuinely horrifying because car car accidents definitely kill more people every year than slashers, or uh, dinosaurs for that matter. <laughs> or dinosaurs for that matter. <laughs> uh, Dino Crisis is like Resident Evil One and Two. It's like an isometric horror game, but instead of zombies, it's raptors. <laughs> oh, cool! <laughs> it's great. I mean, the dinosaurs are kind of what are propelling our cars into each other, so I'd like to blame them for that. Oh, uh, technically yeah. true. Hey. I love that. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, for the uh, emails. For the there's oh, more email actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a. It, I'm kidding about Burnout Paradise. Please don't do that one. But if you do, just play Guns N' Roses song Paradise City. That awful butt rock song is still stuck in my head thanks to the game's menu screen, and it just about <laughs> sums up the entire game. Uh, I would love to hear more PC horror games uh, too, like the indie ones. But I don't know a lot of them. The PC I had when a kid was terrible. Um. And he goes into a couple things he have he had this installed. I'd like to suggest, since you guys delved into I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, I think it'd be very interesting if you looked into the lore for the book that inspired my favorite horror, horror movie, The Thing. A book called Who Goes There? Oh, yeah. That's I a great just idea. watched The Thing for the first time, I want to say, a few weeks ago. It's excellent, eh? Maybe a month and a half ago. I, I quite enjoyed it. I, I feel like I knew I would. I had no idea it was based on a novella by John W. Campbell. But here, here yeah. there you are, huh? And he says, sorry for the long email. Love the show. Uh, I skipped over a couple sentences. So don't worry about the long email, but we're always happy to hear, like, send as much as you like, you know? Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll read it out, and we love to hear from you guys. Yeah, no, no promises. We'll read what you write. We do. Try try and monitor that. If you If you write to us about an inheritance that we don't actually have, we probably won't read it on air. 
Although I think Peter has read a fake spam email uh, email or two once or twice on we did, air. We did it. We've done it a couple times, yeah, because yeah. some of them are short enough. But the spam emails are always like, you think you wrote a long email? Yeah, or like yeah. uh, <laughs> or, or like Stephen in New Jersey always apologizes for Superman's that shit. Dumb friend. Yeah. You got, if you guys really want uh, to read a fucking novella or a short story, just look in our spam folder. Like, <laughs> Oh, it's like it makes it more convincing because yep. you get so exhausted. You're like, I'll send them a thousand yeah. bucks. I we'll don't post care. our password on the website so you guys can check our yeah. email whenever you like. So yeah, exactly. Just look in our folder. look in our spam folder. Okay. <laughs> a quick note about that email. Um, that email is copy pasted from an Instagram message. So this guy actually contacted me on Instagram. So feel free to use the messaging system mm -hmm. there. And if you want it read on air, send it in an email like this guy did. Yeah. Uh, however you guys want to get in touch with us do it because we love hearing from you guys uh, yeah. seriously though if you want to help the show the best thing you can do is leave us a review on whatever you're, you're listening to it it just helps us find new viewers and, and we, we're really not doing this for the money because we don't make any money we just, we're just doing it because we have fun and we love interacting with you guys so the more reviews you guys leave the, the more people that we can reach um, if you don't want to leave a review because you're uh, you know you're against that it's against your religion that's fine you, know, you can always give us money <laughs> patreon.com slash the lore boys uh i know and we know that we haven't exactly delivered on all the things that we promised you guys i i we're we're making steps towards fixing that uh it's not going to happen right away we're just lazy busy boys who don't always get things done on time um if you don't trust Patreon because you don't think that we're going to give a, uh, give you what you guys paid for, well, Lore Boys Premium, we always deliver on every single thing that we've ever promised for Lore Boys uh, Premium. So this is a special one. We're asking for a once-a-year payment of $420.69, okay? Nice. Uh, nice. So Peter uh, has been having a lot of babies, like an unusual <laughs> amount of babies. A lot of them have, like, weird feet that seem to be, like... Yeah. Well, kind of like ungulate feet, you know? Um, so Two or three dribbled out while we were recording. While even, we were recording. I saw. Uh, by the, the, the magic of Hollywood, you guys didn't hear it, but there was a lot of, you know, flute sounds and this weird wailing, uh, <laughs> which, which we managed to cut out. But if you guys want one of his babies, because there's too many of them for his uh, axolotls, it's making his axolotls nervous, uh, we're giving them away. We're doing a special giveaway. So everybody who signs up to the yearly package of Lore Boys Premium for $420.69, don't do the math to find out if it's cheaper or more expensive. I implore you. Uh <laughs> Uh, you guys will be entered in a draw to receive one of Pete's very cute little babies. I've reabsorbed a couple that fell out during the recording, but I'm sure more will come. Yeah, they they uh, they don't seem to be they don't seem to be stopping. If I'm being honest, they come and go. They're independent. It has your <laughs> eyes, Pete, except without lids. It's beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> and they're on the wrong part of its body. Yeah, I don't know how it's to dope. I don't know how to explain it, but its eyes look like they're upside down. Uh, <laughs> and I suppose that would constitute a lore boy. boy. More boys. Out. 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 Hi, my name's Ethan. I moved the mic further away from my face to see if that helps with my sound. Uh, my name is Peter. I'm going to make some chicken rice soup and a barbecued chicken. I realize I have defrosted poultry that uh, will go bad. Does does chicken do that? Does no, chicken. Oh chicken, uh, no, no, no. I think chicken lasts for a while. You just leave it in the sun. Because chickens are like lobsters; they don't age, right? So why would the meat? I don't think that's true. <laughs> okay, we're doing a sound true. check. We're doing... No, okay, just... all right. Get that pickle out of your mouth. Get the pickle out of your mouth. <laughs> I want the pickle. Okay, put it down. Put it out. Put it on the floor. Put it on the floor for now. You can finish I it. I finished it. No, nope. get it, it. Out your, spit it out of your mouth. No. Oh, spit it out of your mouth, young man. Put it in a napkin. Yeah, put it Save in a napkin. You finish it after the show. After the show, okay? It could be your reward for doing a good show. I got more pickles for after the show. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the problem with not having a studio to record in during COVID times. We can't keep control of Jamie's pickle habits. I know. <laughs> Okay, JB, hit us hit us with a sound bite. Um my name is James, and where does the rain really come from? Clouds. Next question. Technically water on the on the ground in the atmosphere and then clouds, but What do you think, Pete? Uh, I was gonna say exactly that. I just agreed with him <laughs> when he said clouds. And where do like, clouds come from? We water on the ground? Uh, yeah, I I also filled that out. Yeah. Hmm. Where does the wind come from? That hatches oh. from eggs. 
Да. 